Hello everyone, it's Lindenherz. <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is actually my third attempt to do the Crystal Tag video. Yeah, my third attempt. <laughs> and they either uh, turned out to be, uh, yeah, uh, the lighting condition were not the best or it was so lengthy that I thought, no, this is something I couldn't, uh, yeah, bring someone to watch over an hour of, uh, yeah, talking about each crystal this is uh, hilarious so um i figured out uh, yeah you have to do it again <laughs> but um this time i think um i will give you just an overview of my crystals and if you want to see uh, some of the pieces more close or want to know some of the properties um of the stones um and how I work with them, then, uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, so I will share you these, uh, this uh, abundant box here with my crystals. We'll share with you some of the, um, the gorgeous ones that I have here. So let's start. Um, you see, I have some of the rough pieces here, like my rose quartz and my black tourmaline, which is a powerful one for me. Um, but I also have uh, these two here, as you can see, a labradorite. So I try to focus. Yeah, this is a gorgeous piece. And it looks really, it looks like an... Oh, there you go. Look at that. Woo. It looks really like an ordinary piece of rock when you see it from this angle. Although there is some glimmer already also in here. But um, yeah like an ordinary piece of rock actually <laughs> so sorry for for this wobbliness here or this uh yeah shaking because uh this time i thought okay i will film it this way handheld <laughs> this one is also a gorgeous piece rough piece of um uh smoky quartz a larger piece of smoky quartz both uh, this one and the labradorite, the rough one, and also the rough piece of rose quartz I got from the medieval market last year. And I will um, visit this market again um, at the beginning of May and looking really forward. And I hope this seller is there again because these three crystals, these rough crystals I got there were so, yeah, I sh should say they were actually cheap. Um the seller just wanted to, for all three, they, he wanted something like oh, $18 or so. So really worth it. <laughs> but I will share with you some of the other pieces here. I try to, yeah, um, organize them a bit like, uh, um, yeah, a bit color wise. Uh, so color organization is in handy here. Sometimes it's, yeah, not so easy to put them all in here. This one you already know. This piece of selenite here. Gorgeous palm stone. Also my cluster of amethyst. Also from Larissa. And yeah, some rose quartz here. And this piece I got from his Foxfire Forest. Yeah. And the camera don't want to focus there. This is a gorgeous one. So, um, this is some uh, stone I still, I guess, I'm not quite sure if these two stones are the same. Um, there are two almost similar uh, sounding ones. Uh, I say it in German, uh, Rodochosit and Rodonite, Rodonite, I don't know. Quite similar with an R and an O. <laughs> Um, yeah, what else do we have here? A lot of jasper, which you can see here, and then a moonstone. This is a moonstone here. So I really like this stone because it has this kind of... And my camera don't want to focus here. There. It looks a bit like a moon face, which I really like. Um, yeah, my first piece of mokaid. This is gorgeous. The colors are amazing and it feels also amazing. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, a lot of Jasper. Here's one piece of Jasper. Yeah, 
This is a gorgeous piece. And this is also, oops, a piece of Jasper that you might know. This is Leopard Skin Jasper, which I also got from Larissa. And what else do we have here? This is probably a Picasso Jasper, but I'm not quite sure. Because some of the stones I got from an uh, advent calendar. And this advent calendar was really annoying because uh, the stones were only depicted on the back with really bad pictures. And uh, after a while, every stone looked the same. And yeah, some of them I wasn't able to figure out, like this one here. Still not sure what this is. It has a... Ach, jetzt. Fokussiere bitte. No, just focus. This is an interesting one. It has some certain uh, reddish color in it, but it is a dark brown, red dark brown. So um, it's quite heavy. Um, I thought... No, it couldn't be a garnet because there wasn't a garnet in this uh, advent calendar. So I'm not sure what this is, but it's a heavy one. So what else do we have here? Um, we have to give you an impression to those of you who don't know the difference. We have here, or I have here, two pieces of citrine. So this one is the natural one and this other one is the man-made uh, citrine. And as you can see, it looks a bit like some foam on the top or here on the side. So this is basically, this was an uh, amethyst that was heated. Um, so heated by men. So um, normally um, in nature, uh, citrine is also formally or was formally amethyst, which was heated through natural processes. But this is here the 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 artificial so to speak artificial one although it's uh, still it's a crystal but i i also like those here but um i always search when i search for when i'm on medieval markets and i uh, so, uh, see there uh, are crystals for um yeah uh, uh, ready for purchase um i ask or i search for citrine and ask the the seller, uh, uh, what kind of citrine this is. Some sellers really say this is natural citrine, but um, yeah, this is a kind of way to uh, ensure um, the quality of the seller. At least I'm thinking that way. This is also a gorgeous piece here. This is a big piece of, uh, yeah, landscape jasper. It's a gorgeous one. I guess I could think about this one to use this one in uh, some kind of shamanic um, work or so also in spell work and it's so smooth such a smooth surface really beautiful so let's see let's see this uh, big piece here is some moss agate and i like this the blues and this look at that almost looks like islands green islands and between there are is the ocean or a, or a lake or so. This is gorgeous. I also have a piece of tree agate. I'm not sure if this is also called tree agate, which is, I guess, this one. I'm not sure if I got this one from the... No, no not necessarily from the... Uh, <sighs> from the uh, advent calendar somewhere else. Hmm. So let's move this aside to get you some impression of the green ones here. So there are some green ones that I got from also from this advent calendar. Like I told you, there are a lot of that look quite similar. So sorry for shaking. So the, the, this one here at the bottom, I guess it's the dark aventurine. This could be a jasper, I'm not sure, and this one I have no idea. It's black on the bottom, maybe this is the jasper. <sighs> I have to look for the... I still um, uh, keep the backing of this advent calendar to yeah, research online again to see what names uh, uh, I don't know and where the pictures uh, are hard to identify, so I research online. Yeah. I also have uh, 
two pieces of Chrysocrawl. So this one is also from the advent calendar, not the best quality, and the tumbled one I got from our metaphysical shop. Um, this piece here uh, should be something uh, along with this piece. Those two came also from this advent calendar, and to be honest, this here at the bottom looks totally artificial to me. Um, the only blue stones that were in there, or almost only the only uh, blue stones, were... Uh, um, a blue quartz and a blue jasper. Maybe this is the blue jasper, but this one looks totally artificial to me. And also this one is, yeah, a bit strange. A bit strange. Also have a piece of aquamarine, also from this calendar. And, and this gorgeous piece of aquamarine I got from uh, this Foxfire Forest. So, let's see. Here, this gorgeous little piece of Labradorite from... Ah, oh, I love this. It's gorgeous to have a smaller one here. And of course, my baby. This is this is one of the stones I would kept, keep for life, I guess. If I have to had to choose. Yeah, I know there were some questions with the crystal tag. Oh, look at this. this. This purple color there at the top. It always amazes me, this. And this is also a stone that I could, yeah, meditate on or path work with because of the... It looks sometimes looks like a forest, but sometimes also like islands and the ocean. This is gorgeous. Mm. And there were some questions regarding the crystal tag. And um, I thought, okay, this would be really the stone that I would keep for life, I guess, together with my black tourmaline and, um, yeah, rose quartz. And eventually also uh, my uh, smoky quartz or my dark smoky quartz, which I also have here. I uh, just have to find it. This is a gorgeous piece of Morian, which is dark smoky quartz, quartz. And when you hear, if you hear some strange sounds in the background, this is my dog snoring. So this is a gorgeous piece of Morian. Like I said, dark smoky quartz. And I have a rough piece somewhere here. This here, which I use as a pen, and I guess I have to fix it a bit tighter. And this is a gorgeous piece I got from my friend Emily Elijah, as well as the tumbled one. And uh, she passed it on to me when she heard that I want to work with a rough piece, uh, or that I want to purchase a rough piece. And uh, she said, this stone now wants to work with you. And I wear it a lot when I shadow when I'm doing shadow work, so it's a gorgeous one, also powerful one. Sometimes feels similar to the black tourmaline, something like this kind of pull inwards. I could describe it best. So gorgeous one. So let's see uh, any others here. Of course, this big, big uh, carnelian, also gorgeous. Got it from a, also from a Christmas market. And what do you think this is? So I just want to focus here. It's not so easy. It looks a bit like a, like a grape. But you can see there are some inclusions in it. Look at that. Uh, ignore my fingernails. I digged a bit on the balcony. My yeah, uh, starting the planting season. So look at that. This is so gorgeous. This, oh wow, look at that. This is uh, a yellow fluoride. <laughs> or uh, a crystal uh, grape. <laughs> no, it's a yellow fluoride. Uh, gorgeous. And I also have a, a more commonly known fluoride here. This here, also one of the pieces I whoop recently got. Not so easy here, and I like love when the light is captured in there. So, yeah, uh, some of the whites. This is the snow quartz, and let's see. This is one of the. Uh, this is one of the uh, snakeskin agates. And yeah, this is 
in the back this is a lapidolite i got recently really gorgeous stone i love the color there are a lot of uh, amethyst uh, ameth uh, amethysts there in the background yeah and yeah a lot of them you already know i also have a piece of amber which is not technically a stone but yeah it's a resin but uh, anyway <laughs> uh piece of black stone here's a tumble tourmaline i also have a um <sighs> an obsidian no an onyx an obsidian i also have obsidian which is here this piece here but the onyx uh, is missing because uh, the onyx was uh, with my uh, Mariel tarot and uh, one day it jumped off and uh, never was seen again i guess i have to search a bit closer uh, um maybe i will find it oh before i forget one of my first pieces of malachite come on focus it's not so easy when you have it in your hands look at that this is i guess it was kelly from the truth and story who said uh, nature is an artist is an artist that's for sure look at that so gorgeous yeah i guess this is everything i have in here almost with a little bit of quartzes here and there a uh, bit of petrified wood this one and with a piece and i also have smaller pieces of bronze side or bronze seat yeah so yeah uh the rainbow colored one is uh is a rainbow hematite yeah and uh, what you see here are my bracelets i only have <laughs> only three so um this uh first one on top is made by my friend emily elijah and she got this was actually um uh, necklace and uh, that she got from an old lady and she made three bracelets out of it one for her one for me and one for another study friend uh, in our season of the seeker studies and i got this one it's just gorgeous it's with hematite and it, it's with um um turquoise and in the middle we have uh rose quartz bracelet and uh also here the last one is an amethyst obviously yeah, uh, I also have some um, some jewelry, which I show you now, but this looks very promising, much faster this video than the one before. So this mess here is actually, it's my jewelry or my pendants, are my pendants. And uh, let's start with this one. This is called Hypersteine or Hypersteen, Hypersteen, I guess. Hyper stain we call it and uh, I also found it on this small medieval market and this looks so amazing looks a bit like wood but then with these straight lines it's a gorgeous one and I know this is a good stone when you want to keep a balance between activity and yeah being more passive so pause and action are equally balanced with this stone um Let's see, a rose quartz heart we also have here, this little piece here, uh, a little piece of amethyst heart, which you can put a thread through it, and mm, let's see, these here, this is a piece of aventurine, a piece of uh, carnelian, a little uh, piece of aventurine as a heart, as a pendant. And also a piece of garnet, which I also got from the same seller. I got the hypersteen, this piece of garnet. And this is a piece of uh, sodalite, which I got um, at the beginning of the year um, to wear um, to wear it because my um my year head spread i drew from also from the camini vruja and this was the first stone i drew um 
Um, yeah, as a first quarter stone, so to speak. Water stone of the year. Uh, and of course my gorgeous ones here. This is a moonstone, which I got last year as a birthday present from Emily Elijah. And the stones, these stones are made by her husband. They, he, he cuts them and he polishes them and he does the wire wrapping around and it's a gorgeous piece. And this one I purchased, whoop, I purchased, whoop, let's see, at the beginning of the year, also from the shop of her, her husband, which is a red um, snakeskin agate, actually, with a copper wire around and uh, it's a stunning piece and in the light it looks so fiery and it was so wonderful. So, um, yeah. Much quicker video than the last ones. Um, um, let's see if I have someone in my reach, someone of my natural stones. This one is one of my wonderful stones I collected last year in the Harz Mountains near a little stream. And uh, as an exchange, I left some of my hair there <laughs> because this is really, look at this color here. And it has this metallic sheen to it. And some certain it looks a bit like a yeah some female features or a human feature <clears throat> yeah could be also a heart <laughs> and i really like that the feel is gorgeous and uh, two of my fossils here this green color on screen looks amazing and this one here really loves to sit on my um, messenger uh, oracle by ravine feeling so this one here and I also have another one, which is uh, which, uh, my boyfriend uh, possesses. And this comes from, um, maybe you saw it in my earlier videos in December. I uh, bought it on a little Christmas market uh, from a man who collected them themselves, so, uh, himself. So quite gorgeous. And when you hear some noise in the background, that's outside a little bit of uh, happy... <laughs> happy turmoil so i hope you liked it um, tell me if you want to know a bit more about some of the crystals i also can share with you some of the books i have so let's see so these are the three books i'm having here at the moment um, this one is from a library but i want to get it this one came in just yesterday and this is this is, this is amazing look at this this is an, a huge book over 460 pages and um, I stumbled over this one when I researched um, the author of this one, the, Mike, uh, the Michael Ginger, or Michael Ginger. And he is quite an expert or was an expert. He died, I guess, a couple, I guess last year, a couple of years ago. I'm not, no, not sure 100 percent, but um, this is a very good book. Um, I also got this one and I got this one for three euro and this one. <laughs> You, it's hilarious. I get it for four euro. This is so gorgeous. And um, this one by Judy Hall is actually the Crystal Bible, just the German version of it. Not so nice cover, but uh, anyway. But the thing is, I asked um, a friend of mine who's quite skilled with her, with healing stones, and um, she said actually that she prefers Ginger. Because uh, Judy Hall has or had some huge mistakes in one of her books, I'm not sure in which one, where she recommended to wear a certain crystal or stone or so, which was high, highly poisonous. She had to yeah, correct that. But yeah, if, uh, I'm in the circles, my friend is, yeah, um, is moving. She says um, um, that most of the people aren't that impressed with her. This is only the thing that I can, uh, yeah, can tell. Still interesting book. A lot of things are quite um, similar to this one. Not everything. Some things are um, not quite sure, but I guess I will get another one of this. But when I researched this uh, author, uh, someone recommended this uh, book, that this should be even better. And it is a large book and you can see all sorts of you get a lot of information about the minerals itself, how you could, some stones you could confuse with other ones. At the beginning, you also have the stones for the chakras, 
for uh, the zodiac signs and so on and so forth um, yeah um, and also the color associations which is interesting how colors are working uh, within healing stones so these are the books i have uh, i will do a review of them i'm not sure if this one by uh, dita stefan and um, david ashberg is available in english i will look that up but uh, if you want to review of this when I'm through this or work my way a bit more through this book, I can give you a review of it as well as this one here. So I wish you a wonderful day or a peaceful night. We will see us very soon. Bye.